welcome to Talk Time. My guest today is Mr. Debasi Sharma, founder of the Deep Sika Cancer Care Foundation, one of the leading cancer care providers in the Northeast which looks at cancer care in a holistic manner. By far, Dipsika Foundation today has become one of the pioneering cancer care providers, not just in the Northeast, but in the country. Devasi Sharma is also the additional resident commissioner of the Assam Bhavan in Mumbai. Devasi Sharma, once again, welcome to Talk Thank Time. You. Thank you. Thank you, Vaspa. Well, uh, you know, I don't have to introduce Dipsika Foundation much because it has been etched in the hearts and minds of the people, not just our Assam, but in the entire Northeast, for the kind of Thank work you. Thank you. that you have been doing since you, was, you set it up in 2004, 16 years running. My first question to you, what is the key? Is it cancer awareness or right. is it proper treatment? What, according to you, holds the key in dealing with this dreaded disease? Uh, I feel um, it should be a combination of the two. The reason being, uh, once a person is identified, right. it's, it's very important that he needs to have a very good you know, cancer care. Uh, he needs to be put in a very good uh, cancer care program, right? But uh, uh, the, the, the catch word, as you have very rightly said, is uh, uh, awareness, creating awareness and early screening holds the key. Because awareness and early screening. Early screening. Okay. And when I say early screening, what I mean is catching the disease at a very early stage, right? Because by the time what we have seen in the Northeastern states and in Assam, right? And we work in the Tata Memorial Hospital. I mean, uh, patients from Assam go and stay with us in yeah. the Bhavan. And we accompany them to the hospital. I, I mean, we are with them when they are there with the doctors. And a common thing which we have noticed there is the doctors would always say that you have come pretty late. And when a person is diagnosed late, the chances of survival decreases, mm -hmm. right? So if a person is detected early, then the chances of survival and cure is much more. Is much more. So for that, in the, at the end of the day, for that, awareness holds the key. Only oh, yes. if you are aware, you will volunteer your, your, yourself for screening. Correct. Okay. So now, what is the level of awareness? My, my question is because I'm asking this question because, you know, there is a rise in cancer cases Absolutely. in Assam mm -hmm. and elsewhere in the Northeast. Oh, it's very some alarming. Pe some people, alarming. Yeah, as you said, I was just about to use the word alarming. Mm. So why is this rise? Uh, why is the situation going out of hand? I mean, at least that is the that is the feeling one gets. Right. You see, it's getting out of hand to a great extent because of uh, the lack of awareness, as you have very rightly said. There are quite a few things to it. A very major contributor to cancer today is lifestyle. 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 Okay. Lifestyles have changed to a great extent. The level of stress, the level of uh, you know uh, consuming, uh, rather eating things which are food uh, habits. Food habits. Mm -hmm. These are key key contributors to cancer. And what we see today is you know. A very, very, I, I'll tell you, relate a very interesting incident. Yeah. Uh, there was a conference in uh, uh, Tata Memorial Hospital where uh, a doctor, you know, started uh, her speech saying, how many times during the day have you gone against nature today, right? And all of us were looking at each other. And she said, uh, how many times have you heard of a pig or a tiger being diagnosed with diabetes or blood pressure? It's not that it does not happen, it does. Yeah. But then the incidence is much lesser, the reason being they do not go against nature. And when having said that, I would like to further reiterate, when I say uh, nature, what I mean is being in the top of the animal chain, but still we are animals, right? So nature has designed our life to be in a certain, in a certain way, which we are, we are violating. Violating all left, the time. right and center yeah. every time. Mm -hmm. And it is because of this, to a great extent that it's not just cancer but today you see the rise in a lot of diseases now food habits you know dr rajendra badwi the you know the director right of uh, the tata memorial center was on this show right a uh, couple of years ago uh -huh. uh, he was talking about the 
food habits of uh, you know the northeastern people yes. people in the northeastern region mm. that uh, they they take too much of barbecue mm. barbecue fish you just uh, heat it up in yes. charcoal put yes. it up on the fire <coughs> then by the time it is uh, it is ready for consumption it has become almost like a piece of charcoal itself right uh, yeah. so that is there is extremely dangerous yeah. and people used to put the betel nuts uh, inside a pit so that it gets much more fermented right and and that becomes toxic at the end of the day you are consuming some toxic stuff right not just the normal betel nut which you get from the mm. tree right it's not that right. you make it further toxic yeah. so uh, to what extent are these responsible oh yes to a great extent because uh, it's see, not just uh, tobacco uh, it's no, no 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 not just tobacco there's this thing called hidol or sutkimas right yeah anything i'll tell you anything that is foul smelling right is not meant for consumption Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. When you dig a pit and put uh, the the betel nut uh, into it, and once you you know remove it from uh, the pit, it it smells horrible, right? It becomes a carcinogen, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit of anything can be tolerated by the human body, but too much of alkaline stuff, car. A little little bit of alkaline uh, things is absolutely fine with you, but when it becomes a part of your regular diet. that is where the problem lies when no, i i i'll talk about the kind of work you have been doing how mm -hmm. you have expanded in the last in 16 years a little later in this segment right. but uh, devashish uh, you know what are some of the prime reasons that you ascribe to the rise in cancer cases in the northeast is it food habit is just one of them mm. uh, what are the rest you see um, what are three it, to four it, it main is, reasons it is you see um, you have to look at it from different you know in different regions take for instance the um, you'd be i mean we were surprised to know that the district called papampare in in arunachal uh, pradesh. Uh, pradesh contributes to the highest number of cervical cancer of patients right so that is attributed to the lack of female hygiene right so uh, now you move to mizoram mizoram because of the consumption of tobacco you have a lot of uh, cancers of the oral cavity and the esophagus and the stomach right Then you come to uh, the East Khasi Hills of uh, Meghalaya. Uh, of Meghalaya, where uh, which contributes after Mizoram, I believe that is the second area which contributes to the maximum number of cancer patients in the northeastern states. In the Trot so region, yeah, yeah, also figures. Probably that is because of the consumption of kwai. Yeah. Then um, you take uh, you come to Assam, the undivided Kamrup region. Assam. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, there are um, uh, genetics. You know, I mean. it does play a role though doctors say it's highly debated but to a certain extent nowadays doctors say that uh, genetics does have to pay, play i mean uh, it it is you know uh, if it is there in the family to a certain extent you know but it does not mean that uh, a person uh, who has cancer in the family will inherit it it's it's not 100% like that right there are various reasons to it i mean you could take the case of angelina jolie yeah. i mean she what she did i mean um, she was too aware but that level of awareness is not there in in the north east it's not there in india and again her case too is highly debated by uh, the the by the doctors but once when we talk about the north eastern states it is diet it is um, genetics it is uh, food habits and Uh, lack of proper lifestyle these are the some the of the reasons in the northeastern north region states now what are we doing mm. deep shika included right. government deep shika yeah. is a ngo mm. you have your plus points you have your limitations as well right uh, we have the governments in the northeastern region with a very very proactive healthcare schemes these days right uh, now you know are we ready to combat this disease can we reverse the trend what is going on what has been your observation of course we can i am very positive about this waspir but uh, you see uh, we have a long way to go and when i say long way what i mean is uh, look at the infrastructure today you know i mean the rate at which uh, i mean take for instance assam um, i believe in the last 5 years uh, 90500 cases were uh, you know uh, were uh, detected i mean undetected i i i yeah. uh, they, they, those are different mm -hmm. and out cancer of cases. Uh, cancer cases out okay. of which around 86400 were registered with the bbci right b borwa cancer b, b borwa cancer yeah. cancer hospital yeah. we have uh, uh, 
the state cancer hospital which has come up which is doing very well it's it's indeed a very very you know uh, very very important step because we need to come up with new hospitals yeah. the private sector too is has started contributing but do we have the adequate infrastructure to deal with uh, the, the 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 menace of cancer no we do not so that is the we, reason we, why b barwa cancer institute is doing its job the state cancer hospital is doing its job but still is that enough that's the no, question no. Is, that's the question that you are posing right right absolutely it's whether we have the adequate infrastructure to deal with the rising trend of cancer cases in the assam and the rest of the northeast we'll talk on that but after this very short break viewers don't go away i'll be right back in conversation with devasi sharma of deep sikha cancer care foundation <laughs> Welcome back. I'm in conversation with Mr. Debasi Sharma, the founder of the Deep Shikha Cancer Care Foundation. Uh, Debasi Sharma, you know, we are talking about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, you have seen some of the best infrastructures outside uh, the northeastern region because you are based in Mumbai. You are closely associated with the Tata Memorial Center. You have visited other cancer care facilities, uh, cancer treatment facilities across the country. So how do you assess between what we have in the northeastern region and what are the, uh, what are the facilities available outside? Why I'm asking you this question because everybody, the government may have certain schemes, but you know, that may not be able to take care of all the cancer patients in the whole of the northeastern region. Right. It's expensive. Right. Uh, it involves a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So how, how can you explain the dynamics, how, what happens when a person is detected with cancer and how do you re re compare and contrast the facilities available? Right. So, um, uh, Wasbe, let us, uh, you know, uh, except for Guwahati uh, and a few very limited places in the northeastern states, we have very few hospitals. And these hospitals which uh, treat cancer, I, I would say that our doctors are very good. They are at par, at par with almost all the, the best doctors in the country. Yeah. But when we, when we talk about uh, the, 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 the required infrastructure, when we talk in terms of the machinery which is required, right? Take for instance, let's talk about uh, radiography. Huh? We, I mean, a person who is diagnosed with cancer, not all of them, but many of them will need to do radiography. What is the waiting list for a person to be radiated in the northeastern states today? Why this big rush to Guwahati? So we, when we are talking about cancer, we are talking about cancer as a whole in the northeast. Mm -hmm. So how many people get radiated, even in Guwahati today, if I'm not mistaken, for those people who do not have the money to pay? You go for those who have the money and they can go into a private hospital that is different. But for those who do not have the money, who have to depend on the state cancer hospital and Bibora Cancer Hospital, mm -hmm. there is a waiting list. You cannot blame the <coughs> hospitals because there is a limit to which, yeah. you know. And that is the reason why people flock to a place, for example, like Mumbai right. for the Tata Memorial right. Center. Tell me, uh, Devasish, you know, a day in the life of Devasish Sharma and his team at the Assam Bhavan in Mumbai, mm -hmm. uh, very briefly. You see, our, our, uh, our life basically revolves around cancer patients, you know, from morning till night because uh, uh, my officers who work there, uh, all of us have to be there at Dabin. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are talking about two things. One is Dipsika, nah. the other is the Assam government. So I, I wear two hats. You yeah. know, one hat is the, 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 foundation. Uh, uh, as the head of the foundation and also as an employee of the Assam Association, yeah. uh, of the Assam government. Uh, government. Mm. So here what happens is, you know, the day would start... Uh, uh, the people would, 7 o'clock in the morning, our bus would go. One officer has to accompany the patients. One bus would go from Dipshika, one bus would go from Assam Bhavan. We run a help desk at the uh, Tata Memorial Hospital. So our boys would be there. And from registration, for I mean Tata a Hospital is a huge, you know, sea for a person who yeah. comes for the first time. He would be totally at loss. He would not know what to do. Mm -hmm. So first is the registration part of it. They would not know uh, how to go about. Then you take them to, uh, you know, guide them to go to the uh, required department. So that would continue till around lunch time. After that again, after lunch it would start again. Then they would come back to the Assam Bhavan or to the Dipshika Bhavans. We have, uh, you know, Dipshika, besides the Assam Bhavan, who can, which can accommodate 150 people. Dipshika, Assam Bhavan can accommodate 150. And people. Dipshika, how many facilities 200, do you have? 200. We have five buildings. Five buildings. Taken and on long-term lease. These are not our own buildings. 
but they have been taken on long term lease for 15 to 20 years. So you, you can accommodate in all 200 people. 200 people. So total of 350 people from Assam can right. be accommodated right. in these facilities. Uh, and, and food at 10 rupees in Dipshika. Okay. Food uh, at 10, 10 rupees, rupees subsidized. 10, 10 rupees. Okay. So that is again a different story. We, we call it the Goodwill Fund. We request the society and the traders to give us not money, but give us stuff, food stuff, which they give very readily because they find a lot of transparency in that. And that is how it so happens. So these are traders from Mumbai? Traders from Mumbai. You see, beneficiaries are 90% from because, Assam. Because we don't restrict ourselves. Then again, Dipshika, does not, it's not just restricted to 90% definitely since people know us, they're people from Assam. But then we have people from neighboring states, a lot of people from neighboring states who come and stay with us. Uh, right and and the sponsors who provide the food are from Mumbai are from Mumbai who do not have any business interest in Assam and they do don't do it as a part of their corporate responsibility Absolutely. they do it as good amazing hum, good human beings amazing that amazing uh, that also talks about the reach uh, of your you and your team both from the Assam government as well as Deepsika uh, the, the relationship that you have built with the community in Mumbai, uh, with the trading community, right. with the business community, with the philanthropists right. who come forward unhesitatingly to aid these people. Right. Wasbi, you see, it's very important when you, when you, you are you know, um, you're taking a, an organization forward, it's very important to involve the locals, right? Because one day I have to come back, you know, and, and uh, I mean, forget coming back one day i have to hand it over to someone else Absolutely. you know the data has to be handed over to yeah. someone else so unless and until we create the infrastructure i mean a system where it will go on if you have not put a system in place if if tomorrow deep shikha or assam bhavan ends with me i'm a government servant tomorrow i have to be transferred i have to go out but if i have not been able to if we have not been able to put a system in place then the whole thing, thing will collapse, will collapse. Yeah. and and you cannot call it to be a successful organization right so that the effort has always been to involve the locals and I'll tell you it has reached a stage where tomorrow if I'm there or not it hardly matters it will go on and and very interestingly we'll talk about Divsika's activities in the Northeast but uh, uh, we have been discussing over the years, uh, you and me, uh, there are people who have absolutely no link, as you have said, mm -hmm. there are individual donors who have absolutely no link with the Northeast, yeah, uh, providing facilities to you yeah. uh, in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, again, very amazing, isn't very, it? Very, very, very ama amazing. Uh, I'll tell you about, there are, I mean, there's this uh, donor called uh, Dirwaniya Ratanlal, you know, a charitable foundation. They sponsor one of our buildings yeah. and the rent is uh, 2.5 lakhs per month and they've been giving it to us for the past 10 years. Uh, and they do not have any uh, business uh, interest. There's another building in sector 7. 2.5 uh, lakh is the market value? Uh, no, no, it's uh, rent per month. Okay. Rent per month. 2.5 lakh, this, this foundation is giving it to you, yeah, the this, money? Yes. To pay the rent? Pay the rent. There's one uh, gentleman, Mr. Muzammil, you know, he is giving it to us. It's it's one of our you know beautiful bhavans. He's giving it to us as a part of zakat. He's zakat, right? So these are people who would never come to Assam to do business, right? These are people who not doing it. So these are these are people who are not doing something to you there mm -hmm. with the hope of getting some business done here. No, it's absolutely, absolutely selfless. Right. That's what you were saying. Right. So I think I think there are people like that in this country. Philanthropy is still not dead. Humanity no, no, is still not. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, not at all. You know, not we all. don't have to be so pessimistic about it. A lot of people say, oh, yeah. where is humanism gone? There is still humanity. And, and it's not just, I'll tell you, it's not just corporate funding. You do need corporate funding. You do need government yeah. support. But individuals, I'll tell you, uh, they have to be pretty sure about where their money is going. There has to be transparency. And, and in case of the NGO sector, it is very, very important that where the money is going. And we talk about that, you know, we have ideas, we want to do certain things, we don't have the money. Uh, I somehow don't agree to this. Uh, people, if they are confident of what you are doing and yeah. they uh, have a genuine feeling that uh, their money is not going astray, their money is not being misused, there would be would many people, to, there would be a time when you may have to you know, uh, refuse donation. Yeah, now, now you know, you, 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 you have uh, so much of experience you've gathered in the last so many years dealing with cancer patients. Mm -hmm. uh, now, is it a fight is not, is it a fight, is it a mental fight as well, is it a mind game as well, uh, as much as it is a medical battle? Of course it is. You see, I'll tell you, uh, the, 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 the emotional factor, you see, it's, it's, a, it's a battle. Uh, a physical as well as a mental battle, right? And when I say mental, one has to be very strong, you know, f physically and mentally very strong because cancer, 
uh, is very, very stressful, for, not just for the patient, for the attendants too, because you see right in front of your eyes a person, a, a healthy person slowly, slowly dwindling De deteriorating, away, yeah. deteriorating, mm. right? Mm. So here, the, the emotional factor, the, the, the you know, uh, giving a lot of emotional support to that person and the strength of uh, mind is very important. So for a person, uh, this is, you know, if you look into uh, the, the most of the history of most of the cases, you will see those people who have conquered cancer are people who have uh, had the strength of mind, who have been very strong and, and who have been able to tell themselves that you see, I am going to I, defeat. I am going to win it. Win it. Absolutely. So that attitude is very important. Attitude extremely important in battling cancer. It is as much a medical battle as it is a mental battle. You have to have very, very strong willpower to combat the disease. That is what Devasi Sharma said. Don't go away. I'll be right back after this short break. <music> Welcome back. I'm still in conversation with Devasi Sharma, the founder of the Deep Shikha Cancer Care Foundation. Uh, Devasi, Deep Shikha, uh, you are 16 year old now. Yeah. Uh, only recently you had your uh, annual celebrations yeah. anniversary. Uh, I was also there, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, like uh, many years I have attended. It's been now, so very nice of you. Uh, amazing experience uh, that I have had. Uh, watching those little kids uh, get up on stage and people clapping, yeah. uh, going to packed houses mm -hmm. whenever you hold your programs. But uh, tell me, I mean, what you run a lot of things in Assam. Mm -hmm. You have a hospice, you have a, uh, you know, shelter home, right. you have uh, other facilities. Right. Uh, tell the viewers something about what are the activities you are doing in Assam. Okay. Um, we run a hospice for uh, the terminally ill uh, in uh, Mirza. Yeah, it's a village. What was the capacity of that? Uh, Twenty-five beds. Okay, 25 hospice. Beds, hospice. Mm -hmm. Today we have started construction on the second floor, where we would be having fourteen more rooms. Okay, so that will. So what is uh, what is the ho what would you do in the hospice? Hospice, uh, it looks after terminally ill cancer patients. It's a it's a place for palliative care. Uh, you see, palliative care does not mean uh, end of life, but in our in the hospice, what happens is. Uh, uh, a very, very important aspect of uh, palliative care is home care. You need to go to the respective homes of the patients who are in excruciating pain to, get, uh, to relieve them, you know, or any symptomatic, uh, um, you know, um, uh, areas where, uh, for instance, uh, uh, he has nauseating feeling, uh, he has, uh, you know, um, severe stomach ache, or maybe he has uh, severe diarrhea, right? So these are areas which need to be dealt in palliative care. Right. So they have to stay. These are residents, right. 25 people. Uh, yes. So they can come and stay with us. We have doctors. We have nurses. How long can they stay with you? As long as. But you see, normally what it's, they come and stay with us till end of life. Right. So long. We never stop them. Uh, so uh, that is what. Is only the patient or an at one attendant? One can attendant too. Can they stay. Can stay. But there are people who need to work. You know, they they are people. Um, yeah. you know, who are day laborers or uh, things like that. So they have to go back to work. So there are times when the patient is left all alone. And so you basically accommodate the poorest of the poor? Poorest of the poor. But then that there the are other people who come too. Okay. But the focus is on poorest, poor, of, the poor. poorest of the poor. Then from there uh, we move on to the Shishu Ashra Sthal here. In, uh, that in is in Soy Mile, Gohati. Six Mile. Six Mile. Okay. Where, uh, what is the Sishu Ashra Sthal? That's are, for kids. These are children. Children are with cancer. Children with cancer who are undergoing treatment here in Guwahati. Not all can go to Mumbai or uh, Chennai. Right. Like people go. Mm -hmm. So these uh, children are getting good treatment here, and and you, I am very happy to tell you that you know the the prognosis is very good. They. Um, uh, are cured and uh, at least 80% of them go back home and if you So you, uh, you must be all your you and your team must be feeling damn good when they're oh, cured yes. and go home Absolutely absolutely you see you get to know that they are cured after a period of around two to three years But three years survivability and then you know slowly the you see that little boy or girl you know? uh, Do you also transport them from the uh, oh, yes, yes, to yes, the yes. hospital we clinic? Do. 
So is it all uh, everything? Uh, some, uh, I mean, your your people from your organization are all the time accompanying. Oh them. yes, they would be one person would be there in case if required. Coordinating the everything. Yes, coordinating everything with, with the can Biborwa Cancer right. Institute uh, and other other places. Yes. Or and is it only the Biborwa Cancer Institute? No, Biborwa as well as the state cancer. State hospital, cancer hospital. State cancer hospital. Okay, then then you talk about the Sishu Astra Sthal. Sishu Astra Sthal, mm. and here in Guwahati, al along with that, we have two vans. You know, two vans which store rural Assam for doing cancer screening. As I had told you early detection is the key to cancer cure do you have a medical doctor attached yes, to the screening yes, process yes uh, dr dhiren dhiren das uh -huh. he is these are full time workers with you uh, not full time he comes part time but he is in charge of our screening project screening process screening project okay. and in the evening he would come to the shishu ashray sthal and uh, and look after these children you know all all those minor problems which yeah. they have so do you have do you also have counselors there Yes, we do. We do, and children doing. You see, students doing social work in different organization institutes. They come. They come uh, for their internship, so they would be there. So uh, we don't have to pay them anything. They uh, they learn, and we also are benefited, benefited. by their service. Then recently, you've opened uh, some rehab centers and shelter homes in Jorhat and Dibrugarh. Jorhat, I think you have opened recently one. No, Jorhat is not opened yet. Okay. It is. It is a rehab center. Rehab which center, is, which would be something you know. I. I uh, which is the need of the hour uh, and uh, the reason why I say this is uh, when a person uh, has limb surgery for instance uh, diagnosed with cancer his hands are you know a hand is cut off or the bread earner of the family dies the, the family comes into the streets you don't know they don't know what to do so the idea is to keep them there for three months teach them something a trade normally it could be doll making it could be weaving it could be candle making it could be knitting because nowadays we have machines Right. So we, as a part of the rehab package, we would teach them these things and send them back with these machines. You know, as a, that machine take for instance a machine by uh, Usha. You know, it's it just costs you around uh, ten thousand rupees. But in that you can do embroidery and everything. So it's not just teaching so you, them. So you also give them the machine. The machine. The, and the uh, equipment related to the trade that trade, person is learning. Uh, uh, teach them, put them there. I mean, they would be there for three months, absolutely free of cost. Mm -hmm. And you go back to the society so that you can earn something at least for survival till you get a foothold on something else. Okay. And from there, as you said, Dibrugar is a shelter home. Dibrugar Medical College has started cancer treatment. And the poorest of the poor, they come from, you know, especially Arunachal, Nagaland and uh, people from, uh, patients from Upper Assam. Mm -hmm. They come yeah. uh, to be treated there. So these uh, patients would be staying in that. Now, 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 this is one, one process that you have started, you are doing. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your plan? Do you also have a strategy to, you see, this is the job of the government because this is quite a huge operation. Right. But sometimes, you know, even uh, lesser uh, organizations or smaller organizations mm -hmm. can do what uh, people in authority cannot. Uh, that we have seen, there are empty instances mm -hmm. in this country and the world. Now, what are you planning? Do you have plan to reduce, to reverse this particular trend of cancer in the Northeast? You see, if I, it, would be, um, it would be a very tall claim if I say that uh, we would uh, you know, try to do that. But then definitely, uh, we would try to provide a holistic approach to cancer. And in this, uh, what I mean is uh, uh, the non-doctoral side of cancer, as I was telling you. Uh, for a doctor, he needs to concentrate fully on treatment, right? As, we, as it is, we have you know, a severe scarcity of good doctors to treat cancer. So today, if the doctor is burdened with where the patient will stay, where he is going to yeah. get blood from, yeah. uh, where he is going to eat, so mm -hmm. the doctor should be free to do his treatment. Our job is to provide to a the holistic, services. holistic infrastructure so that the doctor can treat in peace where these people who would otherwise, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, uh, cases where they would go back home because when they come, they would sell off their property, right. thinking that they would spend the money for treatment only. Right. But once they reach Guwahati or Mumbai or any other you know place in, um, now, they would not know. Yeah. Know. Now, now uh, I'm running short of time. I have uh -huh. to end this uh, very interesting and engaging conversation, Debasish. Uh, you know, we we have heard about how selfless funders are coming to your aid in Mumbai. What mm. has been your experience in the Northeast? Mm. Do you think? Uh, People are aware, people are eager to help an organization like Deep Sika. Lot of You have a lot of goodwill among the people, I must say mm -hmm. that. But otherwise, what has been your experience? Because you cannot run a successful program without funds. Right. right. Uh, uh, you see, uh, I would say the, the climate of donation, the climate of, you know, the fault is ours. I cannot blame, you know, I cannot say that people are, because 
uh, when you see people in uh, you know B Mumbai, Gujarat, all these places, they have a you know within them you know it's the the concept of donation of donating is built within them. In the northeast, it is slightly less, but it is growing now. Growing, growing, and and the onus lies on us. Yeah. Honestly, how, 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 how transparent are how you? How transparent we are. And it, it, it would be very wrong to say that people are not donating. Absolutely. If they see, if they find a good place, if they find an organization which is transparent, which is honest, I'm sure the people, even in the Northeast and in Assam, they will see. Absolutely. They, and they have started. Sishu Ashwai Sal is running like that. Yeah. And, and one thing, uh, I, I, I would, it would be wrong if I do not mention, uh, you know, over and above this, it is the wonderful team which I have. Absolutely, have, absolutely, uh, absolutely. And had it not absolutely. been for the team, I mean, yeah. from the last worker in Udalguri yeah. to the people who run it, you yeah. know, a, a absolutely. leader is as good as his team. People see me in front of the camera, yeah. but then everything, I mean, I owe it to my team. And had it absolutely. not been for them, had absolutely. it not been for the support, and again, you know, being absolutely, you know, so uh, absolutely, are, absolutely, without uh, doubt, uh, a team is necessary to do any good work. Devasish, uh, thank, thank you, you very, very much, much for thank being you. on my show, and wish you all the best for your human service that you are doing. Thank and you so much. May you thank carry you. on with your good work. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.